So when we talked about earnings quality, uh, to just abbreviate EQ, we talked briefly about this concept of earnings management. We kind of had this idea that some firms would uh, kind of engage in transactions specifically to kind of manipulate or massage this earnings number without necessarily rising uh, to the level of fraud. So not necessarily something that's illegal. Uh, so I want to talk a little more in depth about what earnings management is and, and kind of provide an example of how a firm could go about managing earnings. Uh, but let's start with it with a definition it's, it's really you're timing a transaction all right some sale of an asset or something like that to create a gain or a loss with really the main purpose not being some kind of economic rationale but really just to manipulate uh, the earnings number that's that's really kind of what you're trying to do you're just trying to bump up earnings or in some cases bump it down a little bit uh, and again it's important to note uh, that when we talk about this, let me just slide down, this is not necessarily illegal. right? We're not talking about firms just engaging in outright fraud. That's a different discussion. Uh, so when we think about managing earnings or massaging the numbers or however you want to put it, uh, this could take place, it could be upward, where you try and increase earnings, you make it higher, which is usually what we think of, right? You think it's low and you want to make it higher. But in some cases, we actually have firms engage in, in, in downward earnings management. And you might say, well, this is kind of counterintuitive. Why is it that a firm would want to make its earnings smaller? Well, what the firm might do if it had an exceptionally good quarter, it might say, well, you know what? We don't have to report. We, we met our target at this certain threshold. We don't need to go that much higher what we can do is take some of the, the, the uh, extra earnings and actually put it in kind of what we'll call it a cookie jar. So you hear this idea of that the firm has cookie jar reserves, right? So they're basically putting it away for a rainy day, right? So if the, the market was expecting uh, $10 in, in earnings and then they ended up having uh, 17 now they, they're seven higher than what they needed to be. And they might say, well, let's just take that seven and let's save that for some some point in the future. Let's let's hold on to that uh, for let, let's say we'll save it for a rainy day when we're having a bad quarter, bad year, and then we'll tap into that then. And you might say, well, you know, kind of how do these things work? And there's a lot of different ways that a firm can engage in earnings management. So I'm just going to give one example uh, to kind of show you ex exactly how this might work. And in this case, uh, we'll talk about we'll we'll do let's say upward earnings management now let's call it EM earnings management and so in this example let's say that that we have a firm uh, that buys land the firm buys land for a thousand dollars okay now we know in accounting that when you buy land you record it at historical cost so this will just say this is cost Okay, now we're, what's going to happen here in our example is we're going to say that this land is going to appreciate in value. Land appreciates or goes up in value. It appreciates in value. So now the new fair market value, right, the fair market new fair market value of this land will be $1,700. Okay, but the firm hasn't sold the land yet. So because the land is re recorded at historical cost, right, this, this $1,700 gain, or excuse me, the $700 gain is not going to be recorded until you actually sell the land, right? So what we really have here is an unrecorded or unrealized gain. What we say by unrealized is when, what is realized when we sell the land, when we actually get the money. But we have an unrealized gain of seven hundred dollars here so how can this lead to earnings management well let's let's think of a scenario here where let's say let's let's take a let's some let's let's just go put some numbers to this let's say in year one this firm uh, has net income our profit earnings whatever you want to call it of two thousand dollars right and in year two, and we're just ignoring this whole land transaction here. Let's just, just hold that aside for a second. And in year two, uh, the firm is going to have uh, earnings. The earnings is twenty-one hundred, right? So now we've got this nice progression. The earnings are going upward, and and in year three, uh, the firm has earnings. Let's oh, let me backtrack here. Twenty-two hundred. 
So what we see is that the earnings, earnings are going up, 2,000, 2,100, 2,200. But in year four, something happens. There's some kind of problem. The firm loses a customer, something like that, and and earnings are uh, earnings are 1,600. Now, before the firm reports this, right? They're putting together a financial state, or it's the the day before their fiscal year end, or something like that, and they they realize that hey, wait a minute, uh, we're we're just going to be at 1,600 if we don't do something. Well, what can the firm do to kind of manage this number? How can they how can they change it? Well, what they can do is they could just say, well, we're going to sell this land because we have an unrealized gain of $700, right? And we'll realize that gain if we sell the land. Now, what happens? So let, let's take a look at this. If you sell that land, that unrealized gain becomes realized. And when a realized gain is going to go to earnings, right? So what happens? Now we're going to have 2300 will be the earnings number for year four whereas before it was 1600 now this is perfectly legal the firm hasn't committed fraud right the firm it's not like the firm just made up numbers out of thin air right the firm just said look every year our earnings number was going up but then here we had a problem right so the firm says well we want to make sure it continues going up we want that 2200 to be 2300 so we're just going to time a transaction, which was this land that was just sitting on the books, and we're going to time it in, in such a way that we realize the gain in a quarter or a year in this case, and we, we realize that gain in a year where our earnings uh, were not where they, we wanted them to be. Right? It was 1600 and we'll just say, okay, well, we're going to take it and, and bump it up here. So really, we didn't sell the land because we thought now was just the time to sell or the real estate market was going to bottom out or something like that. We just really sold because we really wanted to kind of manipulate or massage or whatever you want to call it, uh, the earnings number. Uh, so now, again, it's important to, to note this is, this is not fraud. Now, in some cases, when we have aggressive earnings management, right? When people start really getting into these these kind of games where they're just there's a lot of pressure for them to meet earnings targets and they're just doing all kinds of transactions really with just the express purpose of of kind of manipulating this earnings number. Sometimes people will go too far and they'll start doing things that that are fraud, that do rise to that level. And they start saying, well, maybe if we we have some fictitious sales or we do channel stuffing or we do all these other things, then we can pump up this this earnings number to get it where we want to be. But but just remember that when we talk about earnings management in general, we're not really referring to fraud. That's a, that's kind of a different thing that aggressive earnings management can lead to. But earnings management, we're really just talking about a firm uh, kind of t timing its transactions in such a way to pump up uh, artificially its earnings number.